The Manifestation of the Sons of God Chapter 41 The Warrior Priest Kings Reading from Daniel 7 I kept looking, and the horn was waging war with the saints and overpowering them, until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was passed in favor of the saints of the Highest One, and the time arrived when the saints took possession of the kingdom. You can read the entire book of Daniel 7 and get a very clear picture as to the conflict of the latter times and the resultant judgment and finality on the spirits of this age. We have entered into for some time now the warfare that earmarks this day in which we walk. Yet, we have been slow to recognize this. Unfortunately, most people still think in terms of future tense because that is the general conditioning within our society. Within Christian circles, most of God's moving is either relegated to the past or put into the future. It takes very little faith to believe in the past or the future, but it takes a great deal to believe that now is the acceptable time of His appearing and His fulfillment. As we've said before, this is the front line. This ingraining of what I call a future tense mentality has deep roots within the hearts and minds of people, always in the future, always believing, but never really attaining. It is the proverbial carrot syndrome. The truth is that now is the acceptable time. The time of the fulfillment of all things is here now. Maybe we should put a piece of tape on our foreheads labeled, It is now, because it's not that difficult to get lulled back into a future tense mindset. If we do not walk with the consciousness of right now, then we're either living in the past or we're living in the future. We're in the conflict of the ages and the authority of the kingdom is resting upon you. The judgments of God are in the earth and like the domino effect, they're beginning to fall in sequence. When you read Daniel 7, the scripture can be difficult to relate to for at some point judgment is past and the saints do possess the kingdom. But what does that mean in English? And at what point does this happen? Or has it happened and we've been asleep at the wheel? Is it yet to happen at some distant time in the future? Probably not in our generation? I don't believe so. For every signpost we have seen along the way of this present journey has pointed to the reality that we're living this time right now. We're dropping our concepts or theories of what we have felt the experience of this scripture might be. We need to let it come forth because we're in this time now. What kingdom are we possessing? The kingdom within. Not an external kingdom. It is the kingdom within. You may say it doesn't feel like I thought it was going to feel. Perhaps everything just doesn't seem to line up with your concept or personal revelation of what you thought it would really be like as these days of the kingdom unfold. But I would tell you this. This is the time. Judgment has been decreed, but it absolutely must be enacted by you. Judgment flows no other way. I don't believe the process of bringing down principalities and powers happens coincidentally. It happens because you specifically know what you're doing and you do it. The Lord directs his army. They hear him and they get the job done. Yes, sir, Lord. What does it mean to possess the kingdom? First of all, the mentality of future tense has to be dropped. Secondly, we must realize that we are possessing the kingdom right now. Right now. And it doesn't matter to me how finished you think you are in the process. You're here, you've been prepared, and it's happening now. Do not judge by what you feel, and do not judge by what would appear, for the God of this present age is able to control and manipulate this natural plane. We know that we war, and that we stand by the word of God. As God decrees it, that is how we see it. When Christ came, the disciples expected him to set up his kingdom, right then, right there. Yet his response was that his kingdom was not of this world. John 18, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would be fighting, so that I would not be handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not of this realm. 
There is so much happening right now, but it's not happening on the level that you may have expected. So what about Armageddon? At this moment, Armageddon's in full swing, but it's a spirit realm reality. Does this mean it will not translate down to this plane of the earth? No, not, not, not at all. None of us have been intense enough yet in our drive before God to see his kingdom fully established. But what does it say in Revelation? They love not their lives unto death. Is that your truth? Because it must be. You must not love your life unto death. We haven't known yet what it means to walk before the Lord on the level of intensity that he is demanding, but we are beginning to get glimpses. The intensity before him is imperative because the spirit world is not going to lay down and take the smelling daisies. If you haven't lived this yet, then lay hold of your calling because the army of the Lord is here. As Jesus said, today in your hearing, these words have been fulfilled. We must drop our concepts of fulfillment. Yes, but you say, I had all these concepts about what it was really going to be like, and this is nothing like I imagined. Well, Dorothy, you're not in Kansas any longer. This is a wake-up call. Do not let the enemy keep you in a holding mode, and he is slicker than you think. You are prepared, you are ready, and it is now. The battle in the heavens is raging for its time judgment will flow from the house of the Lord. The sons of God are ordained not only to loose futility from creation, but to kick down the strongholds of evil and darkness that have withstood his kingdom. Ephesians 3, and to bring to light what is the administration of the mystery which for ages has been hidden in God who created all things, so that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church, to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. And what is this manifold wisdom? That God has sent his sons in Christ to kick down their strongholds and usher them into the pit. It's a done deal. We have spoken about the imperceptible change that is going on within each of the sons daily. You are changing, and that change is exponential. And we've spoken of this, for your change is going to continue to increase more quickly. We've also spoken of the breaking of bonds with how you see yourself, and you must do this for we cannot tie the Lord's hands. Change how you see yourself in the mirror, or or otherwise just throw the mirror away, because the Lord has need of you. But, But you must do this. You've entered into the battle of the ages. The end time conflict. This is really what Paul in Ephesians spoke of concerning an administration suitable to the fullness of times. This battle is already won, but as we have said, you are ordained to give legs to it. You are implementing the victory and the judgment which has already been done. It has been finished. You're in the mop up operation. Step up and say, Lord, count me in. Bring on the high country with all the Nephilim and men of renown, and we'll take a prey by the grace of God. We will take a prey and possess the kingdom for the Lord. Joshua 14, Now then, give me this hill country about which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard on that day that the Anakim were there with great fortified cities. Perhaps the Lord will be with me, and I shall drive them out as the Lord has spoken. And Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, for an inheritance. May we all possess the spirit of Caleb, for although he was advanced in years, he was ready to take on the country. We too have been ordained to drive out the Anakim and the evil of this day from the land which belongs to the sons. And this we will do in the name of the Lord.